but first to our feature story about the emerging new breeds of top-end cattle. At Brunette Downs in the Northern Territory, there's normally about 100,000 head grazing on the station's vast plains. And for the past few decades, they've mostly been Brahmin cattle, well adapted to the North's climatic extremes. But the need for greater production is quite literally changing the complexion of Australia's northern herd. A new style of hybrid beasts, known as composites, are pushing Brahmins off their long-held turf. The vast outback, where the land and sky stretch to a seemingly endless horizon, is the heartland of Australia's cattle industry. And across northern Australia, the peaceful contentment of the massive grazing herds is about to be severely disrupted. The dry season has arrived at Brunette Down Station in the Northern Territory. And as the diminishing waters, the giant lakes, make their seasonal retreat, the collective pulse of the station quickens in expectation. The coming of the dry marks the start of the muster. And take uh, three people with you, and they can go on either side and spread out a bit. In the next few months, most of Brunette's 85,000 cattle will be shifted and sorted. Got our staff in the end of the Feb, and then the rain sort of meant good for us. It's come in and sort of held us up a couple of weeks, but we're ready to go. Next week, by the look at the way things are now, we'll be ready to go. Staff all trained up and ready to, uh, ready to get out there and get into it. Brunette's immense size, 12,225 square kilometres, a touch over three million acres in the old language, means the muster is a mammoth logistical exercise. We'd have 50 staff on board, uh, that, that's, that's probably 25 stock staff. Okay, that is lead through. 10 stock water staff, uh, there's um, pilots, there's road train drivers, there's graders, there's dozer. Put them all together and uh, it makes up about 50 for the season. And now well, I call a season anywhere from mid-March through till sort of end of November. Half of them, jackaroos and jillaroos drawn from farms and ag colleges across the country, are new recruits. Every afternoon in the stockyards, they refine their stock skills. A lot of these blokes just started at jackaroo in this year, their first year. They haven't had a lot of experience, so you have to balance. They've got to learn to control their hands, their reins, make sure the horse is going the right direction. They've got to think about more than one thing at a time, so it's, sort of, it's a good, good practice for them to start with. Hey, you the Australian stock horse is the favoured breed, long striding types to cover the ground, and even temperaments to help ensure horse and rider don't part company somewhere out in the wide blue yonder. A lot of them only ever had a family pet, a dog or something like that, so it's a bit different. They, uh, you know, they've got to look after, they've got to groom it and pull its tail and chew it and all that sort of jazz. Check it down after each ride, make sure there's no rub marks or anything on it. And and yeah, it's a good bit of responsibility for them. And horses, rather than motorbikes, are much preferred. They're just generally steadier. The horse can go at the pace of the, the animal, so therefore we can walk cattle where you want to walk them. A few horses in the lead and a few on the tail, keep, keep the mob at the same pace. And not only that, it's a good attraction for the young ones. They come up here every year to ride horses, to, uh, to, be, to have, be part of their program. Being a good horse person gives you a lot of life skills as well. This is a training drill. When the real stuff starts, the work done by 13 riders here will more likely need just three, with some aerial support from helicopters. If this is the emerging human face of the Northern Australian cattle industry, these cattle are its bovine equivalent. 
they're called Aeco composites. The word composite derives from the mixed ancestry of the cattle. There are at least four breeds in their makeup. And the Aeco are Australian agricultural company which owns and operates the nation's largest cattle herd, about 600,000 head. The purpose behind developing our composite program is to really maximise our profitability and, and sustainability and, and give us a, a line of cattle that can suit all markets and, uh, and give us a fair bit of flexibility and, and productivity. I think in Northern Australia we've come from a, a short horn base and then the, the Brahmin program over the top that gave us a lot of hybrid vigour through the north and people are, are really need to get more fertility into their herd. The composite programs uh, through the north I think will certainly be the way of the future. Season's been ideal for it but uh, traditionally the AAK composites are sort of a good 15-20% in front of where where we were with the Santa, Charolais Santa Pole in it. It's a 25% Santa Pole, 25% Charolais, 50% Santa. The basis behind that was to get a, an AAK composite that could uh, live in the north, in the, amongst the heat and the ticks and the flies and that process, and, but have good, uh, good frame, good eating quality, and meet the requirements of the southern markets in terms of MSA and so forth. At the end of the wet season, the Barclay Tableland looks deceptively benign. But for much of the year, it's a harsh environment for cattle. Hot summers under a tropical sun in mostly shadeless paddocks that rely on water from bores and waterholes. Flies and cattle ticks are a constant irritant and the herbage often lacks nutrient. The whole idea is to have an animal which is more robust and to be able to weather the conditions and the changes in weather conditions from you know, one range we've got monsoonal through dry spells through to you know, heavy rain cyclonic conditions. So you know, these cattle have to withstand a lot of different conditions. AACO's foray into composite cattle began in 1994. Our composite program uh, is a combination of uh, three to four breeds. So we have a Santa Gertrudis base or a Brahmin base, and then we've got a mix of Santa Pole, Charolais, Red Angus, and, uh, and now some Bons Mara. So it's a tropically adapted composite, so it handles the ticks well, it handles the tropical conditions well, but also performs very well in the southern markets. The Bons Mara is a South African breed renowned for its hardiness. As for the southern beef markets, such as the big supermarket chains, they normally shun tropical breeds such as Brahmin and Santa Gertrudis in favour of British breeds such as Angus and Hereford. It has meant that in recent years, most Northern Australian cattle have been shipped as live exports to Southeast Asia, principally Indonesia. We've been putting composite cattle into Indonesia for about the last two years and uh, there's several feedlots up there now paying us a premium for, for composite cattle over the straight Brahmin cattle, getting better feedlot performance, better meat yield and a better carcass overall. So we're certainly extracting the value out of our composite cattle in Indonesia and they handle the heat and the tropical conditions of Indonesia really well, as well as the, um, the cooler conditions of southern Australia. As a global commodity, beef, like most exports, is feeling the impact of the high Australian dollar. It's a factor in the AACO's continual quest for greater production. It's a commodity basically and the costs are going up every, everywhere around us. Everything that we do is go, uh, going up and so we've had to get more efficient at what we do. For the cattle industry, weight gain or turning pasture into beef is the key determinant of profitability. For the AA company, developing this composite breed has been a massive undertaking and a multi-million dollar investment. Distance from market is the other great cost for Northern Australian beef. Brunette Down sits in the middle of the Barclay Tableland, 350 kilometres northeast of Tennant Creek. The mining centre of Mount Isa is more than 600 kilometres to the southeast. That's a typical example of the muscle and the, you know, in, in a mature or sort of near mature. Those bulls are about three, three year old. So as you see, there's plenty of, plenty of meat on them and uh, they look good. The 
The early maturing composites produce a calf a year earlier than the straight Brahmin or Satagatrudis, calving at age two. The coat colours can vary according to which genes dominate, but as the breeding program progresses, most composites tend to have a caramel or reddish coat. On neighbouring Alexandria Downs, 90 kilometres away, a mere stone's throw in territory terms, the North Australian Pastoral Company, or NAPCO, is even further down the road to developing its version of a composite animal. Initially, Alexandria was a, a, a complete shelter on herd, and in 1982 they put Brahmin bulls in. All of a sudden, calves started to live, grow, and, and the company started making a bit of money. An elaborate cross-breeding effort began in 1987, and the first calves arrived two years later. These cattle are a five-way composite cross. And they're three-eight Brahmin, one-eight Charolais, one-eight Africander, five-sixteen Shorthorn, and a sixteenth Hereford. A Hereford comes in through the Belmont Red Bulls that we used in the initial cross. If that seems like a complex equation, it does get more complicated. Studmaster Pam Gobbert's job surely rivals that of the most devoted midwife. Yep, there's certainly some nice little bulls in them. Follow them the way through the ranks and see how they turn out. The main calving season for these is between September and December because we control make them. Every day in those three months I'm out in their paddocks checking them, catching the calves and weighing them, getting a birth weight, birth date, writing down who mum is, getting tail hair so we can DNA back to see who dad is and yeah, just generally having a lot of fun because they get cranky and <laughs> don't like to see who's taking the calf. And what's more, there are 52,000 often cranky cows to contend with, but the diligence and the science are paying off. I guess really you're trying to cherry pick the best genetics or best traits that most suit this country? Yeah, 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 no, it's um, Charolais there of course for its muscling and, and uh, beef attributes and, and the Shorthorn's there with again with its milking ability and beef attributes as well, but that was the base herd. The Africander is there for survivability as well as the Brahmin, and um, with the Africander being a properly adapted boss tourist, well, we've got 50% adaption in the breed, which is good. NAPCO has bred another strain called the Kainuna composite, developed to suit its cattle stations in the Channel Country of Western Queensland. NAPCO's cows are smaller than the AA composites. The company believes that makes them more efficient at converting pasture into beef. When we select, we select for things like temperament and all their figures, scrotal circumference and all that sort of stuff. Every animal is assessed and given an estimated breeding value, or EBV. And hornless cattle, known as poles, tend to get preference. Horn cattle are an increasingly rare sight everywhere these days. Here, their mixed ancestry means a range of coat colours, enough to make the purest cattle breeder blush. But it's what's beneath the skin that really matters and they'll look the same when they don't have their jackets on, so it doesn't matter. We've got to have something the customer likes to eat. Don't they say on TV now it's got to be a nice experience? <laughs> so, um, and eating these is a pretty good experience. So, so it's, um, yeah, I think, I think fertility is the main thing for us up here, but uh, further down the chain, carcass traits are a very, very big part of it too. Yeah, because these old girls have got to have a, they've got to be um, in calf and, and um, rear a wiener every year to stay in the herd if they don't rear a wiener and be back in calf with their colt. So it's, you know, we're hammering all the fertility lines as heavy as we can, as hard as we can. So it's um, well, all a matter for production. If you've got a cow, you might as well be producing, otherwise to the works. Back at Brunette, AO Co's efforts are also underpinned by the latest science in its stockyards. The merits of every animal can be instantly assessed with a wave of an electronic wand. It's basically a, a computer program based on tracking individual cattle through their EID number and therefore we can give um, a full life history of that animal every time it comes through the yards. So you're reading the ear tag I take it? Yeah, the, the, NILS tag, the NLIS tag gets um, read. There's um, computers attached to a, a panel reader or a wand reader such as we have here. Um, it goes directly to the computer and it beasts is added to the the computer program, its history comes up through. So. It's going to be a big database. How many stock will you eventually get on this system? Well, I think AA is looking to put in every beast we own on, on this system. Which will run to 600,000 plus. So it's a major undertaking. It's a major undertaking. It's probably just, it's a cutting edge of technology. We just type in its number, BC11. 
2173. Its weight was 317 kilos. And we save it, and that animal is now finished. It's been entered onto the system. So we can now let her go, and the next one comes through. It's weight gain, it's productivity. Cows that don't perform can't hide anymore. They've got to be having that calf every year for us. Go, 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 go with him, go, go! Computers and composite cattle are a far cry from the traditional image of Northern Australian cattle stations. Right, pull up. Somebody stop him! It's going to allow us to make a lot better decisions on each individual animal as it comes through the crush and as we, as we look for its performance. You know, we know it's had a calf for the last five years. It's a great breeder. It's a, it's a curve bender, and in, uh, in our minds that you know we can get a cow that's coming through every year with a, and we can start identifying those cows and really, really increasing our genetic profile on those cattle across the company. We're, we're starting to hit the, you know, we're starting to do some uh, real, real cool things with our genetics at that point. So how are our, um, our weights for joining looking, Woody? Yeah, not too bad, mate, Mike. We just uh, did a sample weight of some cattle before and the heifers seem to be running from about 280 to 380 kilos. Um, they probably put on about 100 kilos in the last three months, so they've done well. So we're expecting we'll probably get about 84%. Certainly what we've found and, and trials out of the beef CRC have found that getting about 30% additional calves compared to a straight Brahmin line in our composite cattle and uh, we're certainly getting additional growth. Uh, we're getting about 10 to 15% additional growth on grass, uh, about an extra 0.1 to 0.2 kilo a day gain in the feedlot and uh, about 2% extra carcass yield in the abattoir. So it's about $50 a head at least in the feedlot and, and probably $30 to $50 a head out in the paddock as well for us just in, uh, just in weight gain and, and carcass performance. We saw um, in the past people were hung up on breed lines and breed types where now people are really focusing on the profitability of their business. They're, uh, they're assessing cattle on their merit and, uh, and certainly in commerce cattle uh, go a long way to improving profitability. The recent advances in quality and efficiency in the northern beef industry have been welcomed by meat processors. Get around him quick. The productivity and the quality of production in the north has come a long way. Over the last 20 years, the herd has moved north from the south. Numbers are increasing here. We have got the capacity to breed animals, to fatten animals and to finish animals, whether that be on grass or grain. So the production system, the, the capacity to produce numbers, the ability to process at a competitive rate compared to other sites in Australia, and also the ability to move product out of the Port of Brisbane makes the north a significant location for further investment, whether on farm or in processing. And the progress and profitability of composite cattle are being closely scrutinised by other beef producers. Modern technology has allowed us to, to be a lot smarter with that decision-making process. Large companies like AACO or NAPCO, they, they generally lead the way in terms of change. 